Well, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Adrian Lane and I serve as the Victorian Regional Officer for Bush Church Aid. Thank you again for your prayers and financial support for Bush Church Aid, uh, both as a congregation and as individuals. In these tough times, they've been needed more than ever. For those of you not familiar with BCA, we're an Anglican mission committed to supporting Christians in regional and rural Australia as they reach out with the Christian message and care for those in their community. In every state and territory in the Northern Territory, BCA supports a wonderful variety of ministries, including pastors, school chaplains, scripture teachers, evangelists, youth and children's workers, church planters, theological students preparing for country ministry, and even a digital church uh, project, which has ended up being very timely, of course. In many places, these ministries are the only ministry in their area, and without BCA support, they simply wouldn't exist. In Victoria, we're supporting Dale Barclay, who's pastoring a small congregation up at Redcliffs in the Mallee. And although they're only a small church, they're wonderfully engaged in the community through their community food bank and uh, community care program. And actually, during the uh, pandemic, they've provided so many meals that they've actually nearly run out of food a number of times. Up near Bendigo, we're supporting a church plant at Stratfield Say, led by Rob and Michelle Edwards, who've just replaced the Wycarts as church planters. We're also supporting a young Aboriginal man who's studying at Ridley College and Jacob Kelly, who's also studying there as he prepares for country ministry and works up at Achuka. So much has happened in the last few months, hasn't it? But you may remember the awful New Year's uh, fires at Malakuta. Jude Benton is the minister there and we've recently begun supporting her so that she can work full time. As you can imagine, trying to clean up and rebuild during this pandemic is just more stress upon stress. So please pray for Jude and the congregation at Malakuta. Please pray for country kids who've often just left home and uh, they've gone to uni only to discover that they have to learn online, often without their jobs, or without any jobs. And please pray for ministers for country churches. That's Jude at Malakuta, country kids who suddenly had to learn online, and ministers for country churches. We've got a great website at uh, bushchurchaid.com.au, bushchurchaid, or one word, .com.au. You'll find all sorts of interesting stories about what God's doing all around the country. And you can also sign up there to receive our quarterly magazine and prayer notes, either by mail or electronically. Thanks again for your very faithful support, both as a parish and individually, as I mentioned, especially during this tough time. Let's turn now to our Bible reading and our sermon. And our Bible reading comes from Luke chapter 21, beginning at verse 29. And Jesus told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come out in leaf, you see for yourselves and know that the summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, as we come before you, we thank you so much that you speak to us through your word, the Bible. Please open our hearts and minds to understand what you're saying to us today through the Bible. And help us to respond in a way that pleases you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well,
Well, I wonder if you take much note of the seasons. In some parts of the world, the days are much the same, aren't they? But in other parts, there are big changes. I used to live in Massachusetts in America, where it's stifling hot in summer and arctic cold in winter. And by the winter, end of the winter, everyone's got cabin fever. We've all been living in a few buildings for months and we're longing for spring. And those first few signs of spring are such a relief. I now live in Carlton, where the plane trees on Ligon Street become skeletons in winter. But then they burst into bud and green leaves in spring. And it's a great delight to watch. What do you think when you see the seasons change? When you see the signs of summer, do you think, great, let's get out the surfboard? Or do you think, this is the pits, the cool months are over? Would you ever think there's a message in this from God for me? There's a message in this from God for me. When you listen to the news, are you frightened or anxious? Would you ever dare to think the kingdom of God is near? I need to get ready for Christ's return. Well, in this last parable that I just read in Luke, Jesus says, look at the fig tree and indeed all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. You don't need anyone to tell you. It's plain for all to see. Summer is near. Get ready for summer. Just the same, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. You know that the kingdom of God is near. It's plain for all to see. Get ready for the kingdom of God. What things is Jesus referring to here? What things happening? Well, interestingly, this parable comes right in the middle of a larger block of teaching. So to understand it, we need to look at what happens before and what happens after. Jesus is teaching at the temple in Jerusalem in the last few days of his ministry. Now the crowds are hanging on every word, but the Pharisees are out to get him, to silence him and crucify him. And there's a terrible pathos to this parable as Jesus foresees what is going to happen to him, to Jerusalem and its temple, and indeed to the people of God. And Jesus is preparing his disciples for life after his death, after he's physically gone from this world. He doesn't want them to be unprepared, just like he doesn't want us to be unprepared. Forewarned is forearmed. And prepared means praying. The parable sits among four scenes from the future. They're like sections from a movie. They're not in chronological order. Rather, they're more like hills in the distance when you're going on a trek. You can see them up ahead, but for now they're all mixed in together and you don't know which one's first. Now, we haven't got time at the moment to go into each of these scenes, so I'll briefly summarise them for you. The first scene that Jesus paints is in verses 8 to 11. In chapter 21. And I've called it the world in turmoil. It's like a broad brush picture of all that's to come. People claiming to be Jesus, wars, earthquakes, famines, and indeed plagues and pandemics. And when these things happen, Jesus says, don't be frightened. Don't be frightened. 
The second scene that Jesus paints is in verses 12 to 19. It happens before the first scene, and it's about what's going to happen to the disciples. They're going to be hated, betrayed, persecuted, and some are even going to be put to death, all because of Jesus. And what does Jesus want them to do? He wants them to make up their mind now, not to worry about how to defend themselves. Because he's going to give them the words and the wisdom that they need. And even though some of them are going to die, Jesus says, not a hair of your head will perish. How could that be? Well, we'll come to that, that, back, back to that later. I've called this second scene, the disciples persecuted, yet prevail. The disciples persecuted, yet prevail. Prevail. The third scene is in verses 20 to 24, and I've called this one Jerusalem desolated and the age of the Gentiles. The third scene is a time of punishment. Jerusalem and her temple are desolated by the Gentiles, and her people are carted off as prisoners until the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled. So what have we seen so far? Three big scary scenes that are part of the coming cosmic drama. First of all, the world in turmoil. Secondly, the disciples persecuted, yet prevail. And thirdly, Jerusalem desolated and the age of the Gentiles. And then we have a fourth, final, climactic scene in verses 25 to 27. More scary, if that's possible, than anything that's gone before. Let's uh, read with me verses 25 to 27. Luke 21. And there will be signs in, sun, in the sun and moon and stars, and on the earth the stress of nations in perplexity, because of the roaring of the sea and the waves. In other words, there'll be tsunamis, etc. People fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. The, the, all the stars and the moons will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. When these things take place, what are you to do? Gather your passport and valuables and run to a cave? Not on your life. Rather, stand up. Lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. It'll be a terrifying time for everybody else as they face judgment, but not for you. Your suffering is about to end. Stand up and welcome the Saviour. Just like you know summer is around the corner when you see those skeleton trees sprout leaves, you know that when you see these things happening, the kingdom of God is near. So prepare. Get ready. Get ready for the kingdom of God. How do you generally respond to looming disaster? Some people are like soldiers in a war zone when they know they've got to go over the top the next day. They go out and get drunk. They try to eat up all of life that's left for them. Other people worry themselves sick. I'm so worried about the grandkids. What's the world coming to? Well, you know what the world's coming to. I'm telling you and I'm warning you to help you prepare for it. It is coming to wars and disasters. It is coming to great signs in the heavens. Are they signs that God's abandoned us? Just the opposite. They're signs that God is near. 
And he's giving us the chance to turn back to him. He's giving us the chance to turn back to him. So in the meantime, be careful. You can see that God's cosmic plan is coming to fruition, just as Jesus warned in each of those scenes that he described. You can well see that we live in a world of turmoil, can't you? Wars, plagues, tsunamis, earthquakes. Secondly, we can well see that the disciples were brought before synagogues and kings. Some were killed, but they prevailed. Thirdly, we can well see that Jerusalem and her temple were desolated in 70 AD. These are just the pangs of childbirth, you might say. And they're getting more and more painful as the birth approaches. But I'm telling you, the baby will come. So fourthly, don't doubt the certainty of that final scene, that final climactic scene. When the Son of Man will come in great power and glory. Now that's a great comfort to us, isn't it? Especially if we're suffering for our faith. But it's also a great warning. When I was at university, the time when the jacaranda bloomed meant exams. And as the jacaranda got closer and closer to blooming, the exam period got closer and closer, looming. And how you went in your exams evidenced how you'd spent the semester. If you'd spent the semester mucking around, having a good time, the exams laid it all bare. You had nothing to show. So we need to be careful as we await Jesus' return. Otherwise, it'll come upon us unexpectedly, like a trap, as Jesus says in verse 34. And rather than just living for ourselves, rather than being paralysed by the anxieties of life, like rabbits frozen in headlights, we need to be prepared, like Noah, for the flood. Jesus' return means that we should flee from sin. Jesus' return gives life meaning and purpose. And Jesus' return gives this life gravity as we prepare for the next and for our resurrection. So watch and pray. Don't be caught asleep. Be alert. Every disaster is a disaster closer to his coming. And pray, your kingdom come. Deliver us from the time of evil, from the time of trial. Pray that you'll escape all that's about to happen and that you'll be able to stand and welcome the Son of Man coming in his glory. You know, when I was about 14, I was presented with the Christian message and after careful consideration, I came to the conclusion that it was true. But I didn't become a Christian because I didn't want to miss out. I didn't want to change my behaviour and let Jesus be my Lord. But after two or three years, I realised that if he came back then, I would have been on the wrong side of him. And so I relented and gave my life to Christ. Isn't that a message you want to get out to your friends and family, your neighbours and indeed all Australians? And that's what BCA wants to do. Get ready for Christ's return. Get ready for Christ's return. And Jesus told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come out in leaf, you see for yourselves and know that the summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, 
you know that the kingdom of God is near.